Hey everyone, welcome to Fighting Over the Card Catalog, a snarky look back on young adult novels of the 80s and 90s. I'm Jess. And I'm Steven. And I'm here to make my wife happy. We're taking a journey to find out how many terrible and hopefully some not so terrible books from my youth I can get my husband to read before he reconsiders this whole marriage. Hi. What's up? What's up? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We've had a stressful week in a couple of days, but yeah, I don't well, really. That's life for you, I guess. I want to talk about that. No, because it's not all our stories to tell, so <laughs> they're really t- stressful stuff. And $500 for a new alternator. $500 for a new alternator. That costs less than $100, but you know, this is Dallas, so. So mad. And a five, $59 diagnostic charge, right? Yeah, it was $59 for the diagnostics, even though I told them what it was when I came in. I mean, I already did the voltage checks. I already knew it was you it. You dumb shit, but did you bring, like, proof of it? No, it's just one of their things they they have to do. Or we highly recommend you do it. That's not a recommendation. That's a, <laughs> we're going to fucking make you pay for this. I'd respect them a lot more if they said that. But Cool. Yeah, that was not fun no. dealing with. No. Going to the bank and going to the police station. And yeah. Going to, oh, and then calling the fraud department. Yeah. I was proud of myself for doing it, though. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, but they didn't get much. They only got like $130 or something. Yeah. So if, it's if not somebody, that bad. If somebody hacks your bank account. Yeah. Tell totally. somebody right away. Tell somebody right away. Yeah. Yeah. That's not something. Why to you wait call on. me out? <laughs> I didn't say your name. I did not say your you name. You full on <laughs> called me out, boy. <laughs> I was hoping it would just go away. Yeah, that kind of thing doesn't go. <laughs> it doesn't go away, y'all. They tried to get so much, but they didn't because I turned the card off. Yeah, I mean, that was a good thing that you turned the car. I mean... Because it was so much. Yeah, there were probably like 20 attempts to charge things. Yeah, some and of I, them were like a few hundred dollars. Yeah, one was over $600. And then when we were at the police department, there was like, oh, all these like cameras and media coming in. And it's like, oh, something's obviously going on. But the cops were all like real flippant about it. It's like, oh, what did he, what did he say? He was like, oh. You guys got here quick. You got here fast. Ha, ha, ha. We can do it in this room. It's real clean. Turns out a 10-year-old kid got shot. <sighs> I'm real mad. They were just real flippant. For... It's just another day at the office. I guess that was how you know it was a kid of color, I bet. Although, you know, McKinney is the safest city in Texas. For its size. Yeah. For, for any city over 100,000. Yeah. Yeah. So there's supposed to be a um, white supremacist rally uh, downtown this weekend. Lovely. Uh Uh-huh. They were in Denton like two weeks ago. And they put up like posters and stickers all over the place with a QR code. So you don't know what it is. It's like the um, American flag, but where the stars are, there's a QR code that leads you to their Uh website and stuff. But so the people were discussing it in the white people complaining group today, and yeah, comments got turned off on it. Uh. Like, cool, 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 cool. I mean, it was turning into an argument of one person was like, "What can we do?" And everybody else was like, "Just ignore them. That's all they want. They just want the attention." And it's like, I understand that, but we're at a point now. Where we need to be doing something. Yeah, that's pretty much what the advice that they were giving to the Jews at first. Mm-hmm. Or to, to, to they're, the they're just German the rallies. citizens. Yeah, they're just having the rallies. Christians. Don't worry about it. Yep. It doesn't affect you. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that got turned on. The, it started with a woman saying that she contacted the mayor about it. And he was just kind of like, yeah, we know. And, nothing. and somebody's wow. like, oh, well, they probably have a plan. They're just not telling you. And it's like, no. <sighs> anyway, that's, that's, you we go got down, real fun. You want to go downtown and get punched this week? I mean, I would like to do something, <laughs> but I mean, man, 
If I went down there in my wheelchair, though, and they did something, that would be great viral video. Yeah. I mean, I was going to say it would look bad on them, but I mean, <laughs> they're fucking white supremacists. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know. But I was really glad that woman asked that. I was like, yes, I'd really like some actual concrete ideas. So I don't know. Maybe I'll research that. But yeah, because what do you do? You go and yell. Back at them? Make your voice louder than theirs. That's the only thing I can think of. Mm. Let them know that there are people Yeah. that know that they're bad. Yeah. Yeah, the head of this group is like based here in texas and this this he's a kid the head of it he's like 21 now and he was in charlottesville mm. like there are pictures of him and it's like yeah this is like not fucking around yeah the Suffer- southern poverty law center has a lot of hate groups mm-hmm. i read a, an article texas. from them about them yeah um i'm not gonna say their name so let's get into our <laughs> <laughs> It could transition. Uh huh. I have transition music, so <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, Trump's not going to make America great again. Sheila, the great is. Because <laughs> <laughs> this week, <laughs> I've known as Sheila, the great. I know. She kind of reminds me of Trump sometimes with the things she says. Oh, yeah. She is a big fat liar. Yeah, she. She says a lot of untruths. She does. <laughs> By Judy Bloom, published in 1972. Please tell us about it. Sheila Tubman sometimes wonders who she really is. The outgoing, witty, and capable Sheila the Great, or the secret Sheila who's afraid of the dark, spiders, swimming, and dogs. When her family spends the summer in Terrytown. Sheila has to face some of her worst fears. Not only does a dog come with a rented house, but her parents expect Sheila to take swimming lessons. <laughs> Sheila does her best to pretend she's an expert at everything, but she who does that remind you? But she knows she isn't fooling her new best friend, Mouse Ellis, who happens to be a crackerjack swimmer and a dog lover. What will it take for Sheila to admit to the Terrytown kids and to herself? That she's only human. When you said, who does that remind you of? I thought you were talking about me at first. (laughs) (laughs) No, I mean... I guess you mean our president. (laughs) I mean, who's an expert at everything? Right. Like, like, literally, he is an expert of everything. Right. He is an expert at planes. That were in the Revolutionary (laughs) War. He is an expert of the Revolutionary War. Uh-huh. <laughs> He's an expert of the space. Uh-huh. Yeah, of the Space Force. Because we're going to get that Space Force. Um, And, you know, he knows better than all the generals. Mm-hmm. Yeah, who mm-hmm. have gone to school and been in the military mm-hmm. for 20 and 30 years. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. So, do you think Sheila is a narcissist then? Um, because you know, I think that's Trump's main problem because that's a real thing and he fits all the criteria. I would say maybe borderline because everything does like it seemed like revolve around her a little bit in her mind, but I mean, it is her book, so, right? You know, she is a but yeah. Yeah, know. but it's like, but it's like everything that happens, it's, it doesn't matter. It it doesn't really matter about anybody else. Mm-hmm. You know, yes. it's just how right do that. I feel about it and, yeah. and how is it going to affect me? And okay. that's all I'm really worried about. Wow. Do you think she's on Christy Thomas narcissistic level? Um, well, she's a little bit older but not much i guess no like two years when we first meet christy um yeah i would say so i would say so just not as confident on the inside because i think christy is confident on the inside for the most part it's like she won't even admit to herself that she has flaws too 
in a lot Sheila. of a lot of, yeah, Sheila. Yeah. Well, Krista too, but <laughs> um, which is classic, you know, yeah. narcissistic behavior. Yeah. You, you know, even when you have a flaw, it's not a flaw; it's something else. Mm-hmm. You know, we're psycho- psychoanalyzing the hell out of some tweens. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, is that your initial impression of <laughs> yeah the book? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. I mean, yeah, did I, you enjoy it? I mean, I, I kind of remembered the story f- a little bit mm-hmm. um, from reading it as a kid, mm-hmm. but not enough that I would say that I enjoyed it a whole lot as a kid. No. Oh. And, you know, whereas the other ones, I can pretty vividly remember mm-hmm. the the whole, you know, most of the storyline. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, it was it, she was kind of annoying, so I can she say I annoying. no, I didn't really enjoy this one that much. Ouch, all right, so you know, I'm giving it around a five, I guess. Okay, okay. Yeah. Do you think that's what had you been rating back in the day? Oh no, I probably it probably would have been a lot, a lot higher. Well, I mean, not a lot higher, but higher. Mm. Mm. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I can't decide what to give. I mean, it's, I love the way it's written with, you know, her not admitting to herself or to us that she's scared of things. I mean, you know, it's just a very uh, Judy Bloom way of doing it, showing without telling exactly. And so I appreciate that. And I mean, I had a lot of anxieties as a kid. (laughs) Sure. So, yeah, I identified with that. Then and yeah, see myself with me that as, now. Me as, and, you know, me, me too. Yeah. So, um, I'll probably give it a four. Yeah. And plus, I mean, I'm. I know there are valid reasons, but anybody who's scared of dogs or doesn't uh-huh. like, <laughs> I mean, it's always going to take at least one point away from me. For me. Yeah. I, yeah. And she never really explains why no it's yeah just, if there have been know, some almost, well and i guess it's with other things too it's just like it's strange it's unknown yeah. so therefore i don't like it yeah so sheila tubman uh is pretty much scared by everything um she lives in new york in the same building as peter from tales of a fourth grade nothing oh. Uh, we met Sheila a couple times in that book. She went to the playground with. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's her. That's her. That's homegirl. And she did the posters and right. that written report with them. Yeah, that's the Sheila. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah she seemed a lot more together. confident in that. Anyway, she's super scared of Peter's dog, Turtle. If you'll remember, replaced Dribble. The turtle. Oh, man, I never, I didn't even put that really? together. Really? Uh, <laughs> uh, she won't get in the elevator with them, so she prefers to climb 10 flights of stairs in August, and it's super hot. No, in June. Sorry. Yes. Still. Yes. But she won't admit it. She won't admit any of these, like, failings of hers. So her family is going to go to Terrytown, which is a real town, just north of New York City, um, for the whole summer and stay in the Egrins house, a fellow professor of her father's, um, while that family is in England. But unfortunately, they left their dog, Jennifer, with the house. Jennifer's a very good name for a dog, by the way. Uh, what's <laughs> I, that? I just love a regular people name for yeah, a dog. Gotcha. <laughs> so Sheila freaks the hell out. And she'll, like, only get out of the car after everybody promises Sheila, Sheila, ha, Jennifer will never go inside. And her dad says, like, Jennifer's got a dog house and a fenced-in yard, and she's chained, fenced-in area, and she's chained up. I'm like, right. what is, what? Okay, what? Like, <laughs> he says the part about a fenced-in area, but there is never any proof of it, especially right. later. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. So, I'm like... (laughs) I'm just so upset by dogs being chained up. I know it was the 70s and things were different. Sure. (sighs) We used to have a chained dog. Yeah. Because she bit a kid. 
And mm-hmm. it was the other kid's fault. It was his fault. He was it doesn't matter. Like hitting her and mm-hmm. and she Poor bit girl. him. Yeah. And uh so the like they took him to the hospital mm-hmm. and we had to pay for his medical bills for getting the wound sure. cleaned and checked. And the city um, said that he, they, she had to be chained. Aww. She could not walk around loose anymore. Aww. And it was so sad. We had her, her chain in this big tree. So she had a big ways that she could walk. We had her on a long chain. Mm. But she would inevitably wrap, you know, go in yeah. circles around yeah. it. And, and, you know, we'd have to go out and, and yeah. walk her back around the tree. And yeah. Yeah, it was really sad seeing her. Yeah, I mean we've had we've kept dogs on like dog run, uh-huh. and they get tangled up too though. Yeah, 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 makes me sad. This is a made, real fun episode uh, so far. <laughs> they've made some kind of law uh, here now though about about chaining dogs, and I can't remember what it was. Yeah, it's I think it has to do with the weather. The temperatures. Yeah. Yeah, it can't, it can't too be hot out when it's cold. freezing or when it's... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's good. Yeah, that's... But I still don't like changes. it. So, yeah, because, <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're getting a dog just to chain up... What are you doing? Yeah, that's not yeah. right. They're part of the family. They're and, part of the family. And I do realize it's there are people that chain their kids up and put them in cages, but which is also very bad. But yes. That's, that's not a normal person that <laughs> no. does that. No. Um, I mean we're saying this and I think Luna's sitting outside the door like, You're not treating me like family <laughs> right now. <laughs> anyway, so she like gets inside the house and she's like real, real excited about not having to share a room. With her older ballet obsessed, obsessed sister, it's hard to say, Libby. Libby is 13 and very skinny. There is like some body shaming in this book also. Um, she calls mm. Libby a skeleton a lot. But it turns out that Ingrams only have boys. So Sheila is staying in a room full of like plain models and stuff and finds a threatening note from the boys whose room it is. He's like, I'll get you if you mess it up, mess these up. Then Sheila meets a girl named Mouse Ellis, who is dope as hell. Do you like Mouse at least? Yeah. Okay. She introduces herself as a yo-yo junior champion of Terrytown. She asks Sheila how many tricks she can do, but Sheila's are like, um, well, where I'm from, only babies do yo-yos and so like i haven't done it in like eight years which means she was two yeah. <laughs> she's not even a good liar right <laughs> but you i mean you can tell mouse doesn't believe her but like she lets it go yeah. mouse is hella chill yeah i love her so she, he was telling her i can teach you some things and she's like well no i'm sure i'll it'll all come back to me hey. <laughs> Mouse suggests they take Jennifer for a walk, um, but Sheila's like, no, I'm allergic. And she, Mouse is all, oh, that's too bad. My little sister is too, Betsy. Betsy wants a dog, though. She carries around an empty box on the street. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of enjoy Betsy, too. But, and oh, yeah, she's like, well, it gives her hives. And Sheila's like, oh, yeah, me too. I totally get hives from dogs. Uh-huh, uh-huh. On the inside. On the inside. <laughs> Yeah, I've got a description a, of it later. That's some gnarly. <laughs> that's some gnarly eyes. That afternoon, their moms both go to sign them up for the same day camp, which is like a art, cultural art. It's got like performing and visual arts, and it sounds really cool. And Mouse afterwards is like, hey, let's go to the pool. Uh, but of course, Sheila can't swim, but she's not going to admit to it. Uh, she says, oh, I'm getting over a cold. And her mom comes out and is like, come on, let's go sign up for swimming lessons. <laughs> <laughs> if you think Sheila was scared before, it is nothing compared to how she feels about swimming. Her instructor sounds hella cool. His name is Marty. He's in college and he's so nice. And she refuses to like put her, even put her face in the water though. But Marty tells her like, oh, I really wish you would because uh, I'll have to give your mom her money back if I 
can't teach you to swim by the end of summer. And like, I really need it for college. That doesn't seem right to me, but okay. Huh. <laughs> I, I hope that's Marty just fucking with her. <laughs> But I don't know. I I mean, I could see I could see a parent saying, I'll pay you for lessons and I'll pay you for as many lessons as it takes. But mm-hmm. if you can't teach my daughter how to swim, I'm not I I want my money back. That's true, because they do event I mean, they initially sign her up for fifteen lessons and they're like, No, just however many <laughs> you can give her. But the guilt trip works because Sheila does like Marty. She realizes he's a cool guy. So she at least gets in the water, and she learns how to kick with a kickboard at least, which is pretty great. Did you ever have swimming lessons when you were a kid? I did. Um, I vividly remember going to a swimming lesson and my dad getting pulled over by a police officer. Oh. (laughs) And my dad sat and talked with him for like 30 minutes. Because that's what he would do to get out of tickets. He just chit chat and make a friend using that it. white privilege yep. so hard. Uh-huh. Absolutely. And uh, he got out of the ticket, but half of my swim lesson was over by oh, the time. Oh, that would have killed me. <laughs> yeah. But yep, I learned how to swim. How old were you? Man, probably like, like six or seven. Yeah. Yeah. And because we had um, some friends that had a pool and... Mm-hmm. They wanted us to have swimming lessons before. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Uh, where'd you do it at? It was in Palestine, just at somebody's house. Yeah. But she did it. That was her. That's what she did for a job. She taught. People yeah. Swimming. That's what, that's what mine were too. In Jacksonville though. Not in yeah. Jacksonville. But yeah. Um, I was pretty young because I don't remember not swimming because my grandparents lived on the lake. Right. And then we moved to the lake. When I was three, which is probably when I started lessons. Actually, that would make sense. Yeah. <laughs> it was real fun. I liked it a lot better than gymnastic lessons. Um, it was scary at first, but yeah, it yeah. was fun. It ended up being fun. And then I just taught my kids to swim. Yeah. Did you throw them in? No. Good. <laughs> I, I threw a little man in. So, I know you've thrown him in. I've seen you do it before, but at least. Poor Bud. I'm like he does not like the water. I'm like, come on, little man. You actually have webbed feet. He does. You were, you were made for swimming. No, he was not. He was made for laying in the grass in the sun and working on his suntan. Thank you. <laughs> and rolling around on his back every once in a while. That is what he is made for. Thank mm. you. <laughs> uh, I mainly just remember, you know, playing with rings. Diving down to get rings. We did that a lot at, I love at that. our friend's pool house. With yeah. the, the, we had, there was always something we could dive. Yeah. That's so I fun. I think it would still be fun. Yeah. I, I did almost die once. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they had a, like a blow-up boat in the pool. Mm-hmm. And I decided that it would be fun to swim under the boat from one side to the other. Oh, no. And I got turned around and apparently was going the same direction that they were paddling. Oh, no, no. That's scary. Okay. No, <laughs> and it don't was like that. very, very scary. And I did not tell anybody. Oh. I, like, finally got out and I was... <gasps> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just went out, you know, it was, it was yeah. night out. It was uh-huh. dark out. So it was and good. Nobody could over, see what happened. I just went over to one side of the pool and just got to cry to myself. Oh, I would have to. <laughs> I would have called attention to that. No. Yeah. <laughs> so back at the Terrytown pool. Hey, we have a little flashback to the last week for a paragraph or two. Um, older sister Libby has a crush on a lifeguard named Freddy. <laughs> he has very hairy legs. And Libby just thinks he's terrific. And she hangs around his lifeguard chair all afternoon. And when he's off duty, she runs to get him a soda. <laughs> it's like, wow. Okay, this is just a thing girls did. I mean... 13-year-old girls a, did back in the day. Was there a TV show or a movie or something that that was... I don't know, but I mean... The main this character is, doing that or something? This is from 72, and... and I mean, so this maybe like one of those Boy Crazy movies. Stacy was 15 years later. Uh. Yeah. But, I mean, lifeguards are supposed to be hot. Because remember, like, I don't know when Baywatch started, but... 
not long after Boy Crazy Stacy. So, I mean, that was the whole thing. Hey, at least he's not 18 yet. Libby's all like, he's 17 and I'm practically 14 and that's just perfect. <laughs> um, but one day he brings a friend and she's like 16. And so that's the end of that. And Sheila goes, and she doesn't look like a skeleton in her bikini either. <sighs> so it doesn't seem like mouse holds Sheila's lie about swimming against her. She does say how if someone doesn't know how to do something, they should just say so. So Sheila knows she's not buying her bullshit. So there but... were, before we move on, oh, okay, there were a go. bunch of beach movies in the 60s. Right. I mean, there was a beach lot of like... Beach blanket bingo, yeah. beach party, bikini beach, muscle Isn't beach all party. Isn't Frankie and Annette? Um, it looks like a lot of them are. Yeah. Pajama party, how to stuff a wild bikini. What? <laughs> Ski party. <laughs> Where the boys are. The Ooh, horror sorry. of beach party, of party beach. Surf party. Whoa! Dr. Goldfoot and the bikini machine. Beach girls and the monster. Wild on the beach, the girls on the beach. I mean, this is the list goes on. Wow. So yeah, apparently there was. Okay, the, that's true. I did know about that. I knew about like the Frankie and Annette. Yeah. You know, beach blanket bingo and shit. Um. So yeah, okay, we can blame the sixties on it. <laughs> the horror of what? <laughs> the horror of. A oh, horror. Not the horror. I heard horror. <laughs> so I was like, wow. The, the horror of Party Beach. Well, I mean, <laughs> it was still a repressed time. <laughs> Gidget goes Hawaii. Oh, yeah, Gidget. <laughs> Clam Bake, starring. Annette Minicello? Gidget? <laughs> Elvis Presley. Elvis. Oh. You know, Annette Funicello had MS. I like, did not real know that. that at the end of her life. So, mm. yeah. She makes me, well, it kind of makes me feel a little bit better because she was a hell of a dancer. So. And they had the longest her. day listed as a beach movie. It's about that's the, a war movie. That's right? about the Normandy invasion. It happens on a I mean, beach. It is a beach. <laughs> <laughs> oh no not your classic beach movie though. it would become a classic though <laughs> can you imagine frankie and annette just like out there yeah. bopping along like the scenes of, of saving private Ryan? <laughs> yeah <laughs> that would be an instant classic in my book thank you for your service everyone at d-day i don't mean to minimize it <laughs> Sheila's brought, I mean, Mouse has brought Sheila a yo-yo of her own. And Sheila's like, yeah, I may need some lessons since it's been so long. But yeah. And Mouse also tells Sheila about Washington Irving and the legend of Sleepy Hollow since that is set in Terrytown. And so now every sound Sheila hears at night is, of course, the Headless Horseman. Which I'm disappointed she didn't know about before. But Right. But, you know, 10 years old, so. Yeah. I mean, we had the Disney version, but uh -huh. that probably right. came out after this. Right. Because, yeah, we had that on VHS. So. so one day, Mouse's mother is going out, so she takes uh, Mouse over to Sheila's to spend the day. And Mouse suggests they invite the twins, Sandra and Jane, over. Um, They get bored, so they decide to go over to Mouse's house to play inside hide-and-seek. Uh, they're not supposed to be there, obviously, but hey, they know how to break in through the milk door. Um, the milk door is apparently just like a little door that the milkman puts milk in their kitchen through. Apparently right. other people have a milk box that he puts it in. You're looking at me like I should just know this. Did you have a milk door? <laughs> no, we did not have a milk door. <laughs> So it sounds kind of like it's like a box that's built into um, the kitchen that um, maybe like a flip top on, like you would have a garbage can or something like a flip top, but it's connected to the outside of the house mm -hmm. 
with a little door. Yeah. Because as they're sneaking right. in. Yeah, Mouse and Jane get in first, and they're fine. But Sandra, who is a bit overweight, gets stuck. Because of course she does. Yeah. And Sheila can't pull her outside. The others can't pull her in. But Sheila points out that uh, if Mouse and Jane could just, like, unlock the real door and they could come out and help pull. Ah, yes. So, yeah, that works. But Sandra gets all scraped up, of course, and she gets very dramatic. She can't walk. So they carry her inside. And Mouse says, oh, God, we'll have to carry her all the way upstairs to bandage her up. And Sheila's like, no, you could just bring the stuff downstairs and do it here. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, Sheila is coming out with her own. She seems to be the logical one. And And she's the only one. This is the first time that she actually seems like she actually knows something. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it is. Because she knows what, like, antibiotics to, and what True. cleaners to use and mm-hmm. how to bandage. So, yeah, she yeah. actually does get it. She finally it knows sense. something. Yeah. <laughs> so after Sandra's all fixed up, uh, they get on with their game. And, of course, Sheila's all scared about hiding in, by herself in this big house. Um, she ends up hiding for a long time in Mouse's mom's closet. And then, oh, did, shit. What? Did you ever play hide and seek and then you're hiding and you just have to pee really really bad um i don't recall a specific occasion it's like a a, an actual phenomenon that happens and it's um something about anticipation that Uh it makes you have to pee more and i was i I was reading something the other day and it was talking about Another situation that was kind of like that. It had to do with anticipation. It wasn't hide and seek. I can't remember what it was. Real good story, bro. Anyway. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was like a, ph- a, phenom- a psychological phenomenon. It makes yeah, that you makes sense. need to pee. Oh, it, and uh-huh. sometimes poop. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Oh, that would be the worst game of hide and seek ever. <laughs> oh, no. But this one's pretty bad because she's in Sheila's mom. I mean, Mouse's yep. mom's closet. When oh shit, Mouse's mom comes in and finds her, and they're all in a pretty big trouble. Hey, now we get to go to day camp, and Sheila and Mouse's favorite activity is pottery, and they're like supposed to switch between activities, but they don't. They stick with it, and the counselor's like, "Now they're gonna have like a really good bowl at the end of this," mm. and that just made me think of pot. Um, because it's a 70s camp, and Deborah was that the counselor's name? I think so. She sounds like a big old hippie to me. Mm. Anyways, one day Sheila goes to the ca- camp's office for something, and she sees the secretary using a mimeograph machine. And Sheila's like, That would be so cool to use for a camp newspaper. So she gets permission to start one, and everyone's like, Hey, yeah, that's great, you should form some committees. But Sheila's like, nope. And she does everything herself. So she spends all week going around to all the Because she's the best at it. Because she's the best at it. And and she knows how to do it. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And it's all going to be so easy. Like you can president on your own and not really need to listen to advisors or anything. Right. Uh Uh-huh. 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 She even makes a crossword puzzle and has a prize to offer for it for the first, first person to turn it in completed. Um, when it's time to go type up her newsletter, she insists on doing all that herself, too. And it takes for fucking ever, because typing sucks. <laughs> uh, and So then, she's trying to type it, and then she keeps messing up, so she has to start over again. And then eventually the secretary or whatever, she's just mm-hmm. like, I gotta use the typer. Yeah, come on, bitch. <laughs> so then she has to handwrite it all. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, and then she goes to copy it on the mimeograph machine. Uh, and that's really damn difficult. And it ends up all blotchy and blurry. But she hands them out anyway, calling it News Date by Sheila the Great. Hmm. It's a good title. Um, but it's not very long before two guys find her with their completed puzzles. And she's like, 
Oh, I don't have a prize. So, uh, yeah, uh, the prize is you get to run the newspaper now. Huzzah. <laughs> and so they actually do set up committees and wind up doing a great job. Uh, they changed the name, though. <laughs> they did. They did not keep news date by Sheila the Great. And Mouse is like, she's on one committee. And she's like, yeah, this is really fun. I can't believe you stopped. And she was like, mm, the challenge was gone. Yeah, it did. It, it's, it wasn't a challenge anymore. No. Yeah. So one night, Sheila's woken up by like a whole bunch of noise in the backyard. And it turns out Jennifer has found herself a little boyfriend. And yeah, he, what happened to that fenced in area? Exactly. And he keeps coming around for a while, but only at night. It's like, why do you allow this? All of you. You know what's happening. I mean, Sheila doesn't. But they know it's a boy dog because Libby saw it make up against a tree. <laughs> I love that term. That is not used anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so one day, Sheila and Mouse are outside, and Sheila feels like she's being watched. And it's Jennifer's friend. So Sheila freaks out and runs away, of course. And he chases. And she trips over Jennifer's chain, which she should not be chained to. Um, and Sheila shuts her eyes and she, like, thinks she feels blood all over her legs. But no, it's just Jennifer's friend licking her, making sure she's okay. Um, and then Mouse asks her, once it's all over, did you get hives? Hives, yeah, from, oh, Jennifer licking her. Um, she says, oh, yes, I got awful hives all over my liver and intestines. The doctor said I was really lucky this time. I didn't get any on my lugs, lungs. They're the worst kind. <laughs> and so Mouse just, she just lets her go on with her bullshit. But she yeah. knows. She knows. Um, one day, Jennifer's friend just stops coming by. Jennifer's so sad. And then they find out she's pregnant. I mean, no shit. Huh. Uh, so they write to the Egrens in England and, well, they're thrilled. Um, and they tell the Tubmans that they can have the pick of the litter. And Sheila throws a fit, of course, but Libby throws one right back. Hmm. She's like, why do you it always have to be for you? I want a puppy. And I'm like, for you, Libby. Um, but their parents say it doesn't matter yet anyway. She's still pregnant <laughs> right now. You know, it'll be like September before she has them, so calm the fuck down. <laughs> Just fucking spay and neuter your pets. God. <laughs> There's your Bob Barker moment. Is Bob Barker still alive? Did he die? He died. Did he? Did he? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, it's back at camp. Uh, they're going to be putting on a play of Peter Pan. And Sheila and Mouse are just happy to be painting scenery. Um, but Libby, like, desperately wants to be Wendy. But, unfortunately, she gets cast as Captain Hook and Toad's upset about it. She's like, I'm gonna learn Wendy's lines anyway, in case that other girl gets sick. <sighs> and Sheila and Mouse end up on stage anyway, holding an arch up, because otherwise it falls over. Problem is, the archway won't stand up by itself. Every time we put it on the stage, it falls to one side. So Mike, the counselor in charge of scenery, says that me and Mouse are going to have to stand behind it and hold it up while the play is going on. Now, as someone who has built a lot of scenery for theater, this upsets me to no end, especially with children. My God, what? How is it falling down to one side? Is there any framing to it? What are you doing, Mike? It just Mike? sounds like it's a big piece of cardboard. That's what I'm envisioning. Mike, just this big piece of cardboard that folds in. Slap some out. one by fours together. Yeah. They can still move it, trust. With like some good angle braces and then it'd be fine. <sighs> I part really upsets me. <laughs> um But by doing this, Sheila learns everyone's lines. And when Wendy does indeed forget hers during their performance, she's able to, like, whisper him to her and saves the performance. Until Mouse laughs so hard that they drop the archway anyway. <laughs> but it's fine. They get it back up in a few seconds. <laughs> uh, I mean, at least it was cardboard. It wasn't going to kill anybody. I guess. <laughs> anyway. So Marty's still working on trying to get Sheila to put her face in the water, and he's really proud of her when she says it's because she's too scared. She's never admitted it before. Right. So, yeah, I, I'm proud of her, too. That's a bit of character growth and 
development for. Good job. Did we miss the sleepover? No, not yet. Okay. Uh, so Marty shows her how easy it is, and she's like, you know, starts thinking about having to give the money back, and so finally she just decides to try. She finally freaking gets it. And so Marty's like, yeah, next step is a swimming test. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, so now Sheila gets to have a slumber party with Mouse and Sandra and Jane. Um, and Libby gets to have a friend over, too, which pisses Sheila off. But they're 13-year-olds. They don't care what the what a bunch of 4-10-year-olds right. are doing. If it was God. a boy 13-year-old, then, yeah, they'd be trying to annoy the shit out of you. But Yeah. But half those 10-year-old girls would, like, kind of be liking the attention of, you know. <laughs> okay, now we get into, like, some real huge body shaming. Um, first, when they're just changing into their pajamas. Um, Sandra changed her clothes in my closet. I think she's getting fatter. But I wouldn't say that to her face. She's very sensitive and would start to cry. She should go on a diet. So just then, Mouse decides to come up with a great idea to make a slam book. But since everybody wants to know what other people really think of them, this is an easy way to find out. Do they? Do people really want to know what other people think of them? I wouldn't at 10. This is such a bad idea. Such a bad idea. I, I don't know if it... I mean, it sounds like they've played this before. They've got to know what happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is, it is a very bad idea. It's a very bad idea, but it's a very... I mean... Like, like, when I've heard of slam books, they're not about, like, you and three other people in the room. It's about other people in, like, your grade or whatever. Yeah, it's like it's anonymous, uh, but there's only three people here. And if all of you say something bad about somebody, then you know that all of them said something yeah. bad about you. So, yeah, obviously this goes very well. <laughs> Everybody writes what they think about the other's hair, face, body, brain, their best thing. Their worst thing, and just in general. Sheila says, I knew I didn't have to worry about what my friends think of me because I am careful to keep my bad points to myself. Sometimes I think I am really two people. I am the only one who knows Sheila Tubman. Everyone else knows only Sheila the Great. That is very (laughs) Trumpian, for sure. Uh, So, yeah. Of course, everyone ends up all upset because... Everybody writes something shitty about everyone else. Um, <laughs> they really go all out and end up throwing all the toy models at each other and breaking them. And Libby comes in and she's like, I'm going to tell our parents. And Sheila goes, blah, blah, blah. And then Mouse goes, blah, 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 too. And that just makes everybody laugh and they're all friends again. No. Okay. No. No. Um, so, yeah, I've had sleepovers like this about that age. I mean, pretty much all sleepovers ended up like that. Really? I can't tell you what they were, why, <laughs> but because, like, twin girls are very emotional, and that's a lot of, you know, just coming out hormones and stuff all in one room is the only way I can. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I remember my eighth birthday so i wasn't even that old but i had some older neighbors um we stayed in my grandparents guest house so we could yell (laughs) without anybody hearing and man i just remember there were two rooms and it wasn't like a big fancy guest house there were two bedrooms um and a hallway and a toilet on one side and a shower on the other the sliding doors it was real real small but we were going back and forth between the rooms, screaming at each other and going back <laughs> and crying on the bed. And I remember screaming. This was our, one of our big lines then was, well, excuse me for living. I have a very vivid memory of yelling that at my neighbor and then her leaving and going into the other. I don't know what it was about. I don't know why we were fighting. But a lot of sleepovers ended like that. Not ended. You know, we eventually make up usually. Usually. So, yeah, that's why I've always kind of thought the sleepover friends were crap. Because they have fights, but they don't have fights. Right. You know, they have arguments. So, do you have any boy sleepovers like that? Um, not that I can recall. You're lucky. <laughs> no breaking of someone else's property. Probably. <laughs> I don't recall, though. <laughs> 
anyways, they spent the rest of the evening uh, trying to put the models back together. Because remember, that once his face said he was going to get Sheila if anything happened. Yeah. So they all try to put him back together and eat pizza. Of course, Sandra ate two pieces and reached for a third, but we all shook our heads at her. Yeah. And she took her hand away and said, the truth really hurts. We all agreed. <sighs> it's like, yeah, we had these books, like, through the 70s and 80s, right? And then everybody's, like, all fucking surprised when, like, hero- heroin chic is, like, all in style and... Everybody's got eating disorders in the 90s and stuff. It's like, well, yeah. look at what we were reading as children. And this is from one of the really good authors. Right. You know? I mean, it was just... Ugh. Yeah. Never mind the magazines and the images they're showing. and Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. So anyway. I mean, it, they're yeah. starting that conditioning as... Yeah. Kid books. Yeah. Cause I probably read this when I was like eight. I don't know. About the excuse me for living. (laughs) (laughs) Good times. (laughs) So it's a day day of Sheila's swimming test. And she hopes for all sorts of ways to get out of it. Like maybe I'll get sick. Maybe it'll rain. But to no avail. So first she has to swim the length of the pool. The deep end. 40 feet. And she thinks she'll never be able to do it. And she starts getting so tired. But Marty's walking along the side of the pool with her, and her friends are on the other end cheering her on. And it's very inspiring and wonderful, and she makes it. And then after that, she has to tread tread water for two minutes. That's a long time after you're already tired, really. Yeah. (laughs) But she does it, even though she thinks she's going to die. So she passes her test. But she can't really celebrate because she's so tired she falls asleep. (laughs) It's like, yeah, dog, I bet. But good for her. So it's the end of the summer. The Tubmans have a barbecue with all their friends. um, Including Marty, who does not have to give his money back. Yay! Mm. (laughs) Um, They grill and kids play baseball. uh, But suddenly, Sheila freezes. Because Jennifer's friend has come back. But now he has his owner, whose name is Cyrus, chasing after him. (laughs) Jennifer's friend's name is Mumford. And I really love that. it would have been better before Mumford and Sons, but you know. <laughs> but hey, Jennifer's gonna have them. Ah, it's Mumford and Sons. <laughs> so Sheila's dad explains how they know Mumford and about Jennifer's condition, and everybody thinks it's hilarious. I I just guess they don't have an animal overpopulation problem in Terrytown. Sheila suddenly remembers she's in the yard with two dogs and she hightails it back to the house. But when she gets inside, she starts thinking about how a puppy would be nicer uh, than a big dog and better than, like, turtle and a lot cuter. So she decides that she'll just think about it later. And that's the cliffhanger they <laughs> she leaves you on. <laughs> Yeah, and they don't they don't tell you anything about like when the boy comes home and finds his broken box. Yeah, well, they fixed most concept. of them. They threw one out, and they <laughs> said it said they kind of fixed most of yeah, them. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You know, it was a sloppy job. Yeah. <laughs> did you have models when you were a kid? I did have models. I did. I did some models. You did some models. Um, yeah. Hey, great job. No. <laughs> there were the snap kind where you like just snapped it together mm. and then you had the glue kind. And the glue kind was much more difficult. Sure. And then my parents couldn't afford the paint or my mom couldn't afford the paint for them. So yeah, it seemed like do an expensive of, hobby. Yeah, it, it could get there, especially yeah. having the good paints and stuff. So And the good glue because... What was what was the name of the one they referred to? I mean, Sheila referred to the brand of the like glue a Testo lot. or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have that? Yes. Okay. All right. So it yeah, was like was, a... Yeah, it was like Right. It was like the brand. Kleenex of model glue. Right. Okay. Pretty much. Cool, cool, cool. Um, but then they had some models where, you know, you just put stickers on it. So it'd be like mm. um, a World War II plane. It mm-hmm. was all green. Yeah. 
And then you just put stickers with the stars and stuff on it. Super fun. Um, and then you'd have the cars like the General oh, Lee. Ah, yeah. oh, sure, sure. You know, sure. it's pretty much all one color, and then yeah. you just put some stickers on. <laughs> so was that a model or a toy? Is it because you put some work into it yourself? It was a model, or yeah, you so no, so you would have to snap the pieces together. Oh, right, yeah. right, okay, 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 right, right, right. Not you know they would have different they would have different difficulty levels. Sure. So um, you know you could figure out how hard it was going to be from that. And as a smaller kid, I would do the less difficult ones. Yeah. Yeah. Was that your favorite one? The General Lee? Yeah. No. <laughs> I think the planes were probably my oh. favorites. And then did you play with them or did you just like hang them up or put no, them on a shelf? Yeah, them? pretty much. On a shelf? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I had one with a rotary motor, you know, the mm -hmm. little propellers. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, it's not a lot you can play with, but you play with it a little bit. You can pretend. Yeah. And, you know, I was really into Star Wars and stuff like that. So. Oh, so you pretended they were that. Did you yeah, have Star you know, Wars I mean, it models? Wasn't, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't the scale, so, you know, you'd have like, <laughs> you'd have like a, a Yoda standing on top of a plane or something uh -huh. like that. Yeah. Like a three-inch um, Yoda. <laughs> no, I mean, not in the sense that, and no Star Wars models in the sense mm. of putting together. Like yeah. That. There's I mean, I had this, you know, I would have like sets that you yeah. put together that, right. <laughs> but right. it was just, you know, the way it was, it wasn't sure. really a model. Right. So what are you currently reading? So I, I finished Miles Morales, Spider-Man. Um, I gave it three stars. It was. You said he was too angsty. Yeah, very angsty, and I, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to read Miles, there's more than just him, mm. and it, they, he's got books by other authors. So, I mean, if you're going to read this series, you might as well read it. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Not for you. And then um, I finished a book called um, Nixia Unleashed by Scott Rentgen. R E I N T G E N. And it's a part of a trilogy series. Mm -hmm. And I'll just read the blur for it. Emmett Atwater thought Babel's game sounded easy. Get points, get paid, go home. But it didn't take long for him to learn that Babel's competition was full of broken promises, none darker or more damaging than the final one. Now Emmett and the rest of the Genesis survivors must rally and forge their own path. Through a dangerous new world. Their mission from Babel is simple. Extract Nixie, the most valuable material in the world, in the universe. And went over the indigenous Adamite population. But Emmett and the others quickly realize they are caught between two powerful forces. Babel and the Adamites. With clashing agendas. Will the Genesis team make it out alive? This is the second book in the series, by the way. Mm. So, yeah. Uh, uh, I like it. I gave it yeah. a four stars out of five on Goodreads. So. Oh, I've got the third book on hold. Nice. What are you reading right now? Um, I am reading Spy Camp, which is the second book in the series. Yeah, I was going to say, you had a spy one, like, last yeah. week or the week before. Yeah, so that's the second book. I, I guess there's, like, five or six spy books. Spy School. That's what yeah, it was. Spy yeah, Spy School. Uh, so I'm actually almost done with that nice. one. All right, well, I finished A uh, Long Way to a Small and Great Planet, um, and yeah, I continue liking it uh, for the same reasons I did for the first half of it. Um, it continued all the diversity and inclusivity that I really liked, and there's some really great emotional character shit in it. So yeah, there I get four out of five, and it's part of a trilogy as of now, at least, so I wouldn't mind reading the others either. I also read a graphic novel called Paper Girls, and I was hoping to like it a whole lot more than I did. Mm. I don't remember where it was recommended from. I can see why people like it. It's about this group of four paper girls in the 80s, um, and they're out doing their thing, and weird shit starts happening, and it ends up being like a time travel type thing. 
But I just couldn't get into the characters too much. I couldn't really get any connection to it. I couldn't. And then I realized that might be because they're like 12 year old girls all written by guys. The author, Brian K. Vaughn. Uh, the illustrator is Cliff Chang. The colorist is Matthew Wilson. And the lettering is done by Jared K. Fletcher. So I'm wondering if that's why it didn't seem <laughs> real enough to me or whatever. Anyways, that's the whole series. Um, it was highly recommended, even though I don't remember where from. So I don't know. I wouldn't say don't read it, but I'm not going to read it anymore. <laughs> So I'm currently reading, finally, Lost Roses by Martha Hall Kelly. And this is the second um, following the Lilac Girls, which was a pretty big bestseller. I say it's a bestseller if I see it at Walmart. (laughs) And I have seen it at Walmart. Um, And that book fucked me up. It was about three women in around World War II. And one was like a prisoner in a camp and one was a guard and one was an American looking into all this later on. Um, And yeah, that's where I learned about the rabbits, which (sighs) is a group of women who were like horribly experimented upon. Mm. And it is it's it's rough reading. Um, But the woman in America ends up like bringing them over. And they get health, like, fixed up and stuff. And they kind of get a little famous. And anyways, that's Lilac Girls. Now they would just get sent back to the same country. Sure. But Lost Roses takes place in World War One, And Caroline, the American woman, is a little girl in this one. Um, and now I just completely lost. Oh, and it's, it's the same-ish so far. There is a adult woman in uh america and two women in russia and that's so you know like all around like one of the women is related to the czar and you know that goes pretty shitty so she's like a cousin to one of them so she knows like the romanov girls and stuff and yeah (laughs) but anyways i'm only halfway through that but i'm enjoying it that's the type of historical fiction i like (laughs) you know there might be a boyfriend somewhere but it's not the Right. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, yeah, that's what I'm on. It's real good. Good deal. Good deal. So thanks for listening, everyone. (laughs) Hey, did you know we still only have one review (laughs) on Apple Podcasts? That makes me really sad. (laughs) So so why why don't why don't y'all just get on there and rate and subscribe on the Apple Podcast. Just do it for me, your buddy. We'll give you a your dollar. Buddy, I'll give you a dollar. <laughs> rate us and then tell us. We'll give you a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that's a big old <laughs> promise, but you're saying it okay. <laughs> and also, if you've been enjoying our show, please share it and um, tell your friends and enemies and, uh, and all the social medias in good places. You can check out our website, fightingoverthecardcatalog.com. To find out where we are all in one place. But you can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr, YouTube, and Pinterest (laughs) Pinterest at Fighting Over the Card Catalog. Twitter at Card Catalog Pod. And my own personal, where you can hear a whole lot more about being angry at white supremacists at Just Digress. Our next book is going to be the fourth. I don't have the third. In the sleepover, friends, um, Patty's new look. Because we all love us a good makeover, right? Right. <laughs> that look. Wow, y'all. <laughs> We're rereading the books of your childhood. So you don't have to. <laughs> Bye, everybody.